constructive and visualized exploration. And Tao Guo will be giving the talk. Thank you. OK. So our work is basically to help users to understand and, and to uh, know, the data be, know the spatial data before they are ready to use them. So the problem here is now we have, sorry. So the problem here is now is that we have a lot of data now. So when help you to uh, explore the data, the most straightforward way is to put them on a map to visualize them. But the problem here is that if we put a lot of data on a single map, they may overlap each other and they are not read, uh, friendly to the users. So in this work, we aim to select a, a very small collection of data such that these data are not uh, overlapping with, with each other and they are very easy for users to read them. And the most important is that the small data set can represent the whole data collection as much as possible. So we can also uh, let the users to like to click one of the data. Uh, so here is an example the user can like to click. There's a restaurant uh, steakhouse. And, and at the same time, we can show more the uh, similar results here on the map. So in, in this way, we can uh, better to help the users to uh, explore the data site. So, by, uh, so the problem here is that when play, playing with the maps, uh, we should uh, consider the consistency. For example, we have shown, uh, this is an example uh, from Google Map, and we have shown some uh, uh, items on the map, for example, the New York uh, ex Stock Exchange here. By uh, zooming in the map, something uh, already shown on the map should be uh, visible, and we should uh, maintain the consistency of the, uh, after the user's operations. So in this work, we consider three types of uh, interactive operations, the zoom in, zoom out, and panning. For, for the zoom in operation, uh, something is already shown on the map should be visible after zoom in. And for the zoom out, some uh, item that are not visible should be uh, also not visible after zoom out. And similarly for, for panning, and the overlap space should be remain consistent. So our work has the following features. So we first consider the moving and uh, zooming and movement consistency, and we also consider the uh, visibility constraint. It means that the results shown on the map should not be cl uh, too close to, to each other. And we want the result to, to be a representative. It means the result should represent the whole data set as much as, as possible. And in this work, we also uh, consider a variety type of uh, geospatial data. It may include the uh, documents, the images, and in this way, we need to support, uh, we use a very general uh, similarity function, so we can uh, support different type of the data. So we also uh, want to have a very efficient algorithm such that the uh, uh, problem is uh, online, so the user can get the results immediately. So compared to some uh, existing works, our work is the first uh, to support all the uh, uh, features. So given this uh, concept, uh, uh, we, the geospatial data we are studying about is uh, consists of three components. It has the location, it has a weight of importance, it also has a set of contributes. So for the different uh, type of the spatial data, we can use the different attributes, and in this way we can compute the similarity between, the, uh, between each pair of the objects. So for, for example, for the, uh, for the Twitters, we, the attributes can be like the textual content, the post user, the time spec. So we already know given the two objects, we can compute the similarity. But given one object uh, and a, a set of objects, S, so we use, here we use the maximum similarity between uh, one uh, object O and uh, another object in the object S. The intuition behind here is that if we, uh, this uh, object S can represent uh, the uh, object O, it means that the similarity between O and some object in S is very high. So when we extend this one object to all the objects, we have the following object function. And in, in this work, we want to uh, maximize this uh, object function as much as possible. So here we also uh, consider the weight of, the, of, the, of each uh, object here. 
So given this concept, we have proposed a spatial object selection problem. So the problem uh, is to select a subset of object S, uh, which is size of K, uh, from a, a geospatial object size da data. So we want this uh, result to be uh, meet the map cons uh, constraints. So in the results, uh, each pair of the objects should be uh, larger or equal to a given uh, parameter. So we want to the re results to maximize the the object function as much as possible. So when considering the interactive operations, uh, the problem actually is uh, very similar. But we also consider uh, two more uh, two more uh, concepts. The so one is that we should consider the candidates that we can choose from, and another is that uh, we should consider the uh, the set of objects that are always visible before and after our operations. So. Given that we come to a, a greedy solution, we we'll first prove that the object function is submodular, such that we give the the idea behind that is that uh, we compute the objects that uh, contribute to the uh, uh, representative score, and in each round we uh, choose the object that can increase the score as the to the most, and to prove that this uh, algorithm has a, a, a constant approximation ratio. And we also uh, do the uh, laser forward to optimize the, the, the time. And for the interact uh, version of this problem, we also uh, notice that some uh, computation can be done before the user's next uh, operation. So we uh, use the perfection technique to do, do some pre-computation. So we also uh, do the sampling extension uh, when the set of data set is quite large. So our experiments, we are using three different uh, real-world uh, data sites, and we compare with uh, five baselines. So we can see that our uh, algorithm uh, is uh, also performs the five baselines uh, in order uh, determinants of the runtime and the score. And our we can also see that our uh, sampling-based algorithm is uh, a little bit. Uh, a little, a little bit, the quality of the, our uh, sampling ex extension is, uh, is a, a little bit faster, but the quality is uh, nearly to the, to the, the gridding algorithm. So here is an inter interesting uh, case study. So here, here uh, we are given uh, some objects, and we use the distance as the similarity function. So we, we aim to see that uh, the, by only see the uh, by only see the selected subset of data, we can know the distribution of the original data set. So we can see that the second picture is the result picked by our algorithm. And compared to the random and the other, uh, other uh, baselines, uh, our problem can uh, somehow represent how the data is distributed in the space. And that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. So I was wondering if you can go back to the problem definition we are, you mentioned. And uh, so ne uh, and next slides, and, uh, and, and then next one. Uh, uh, page nine, I think, maybe. Uh, again, next one. So sorry about that. I didn't remember the, the exact page number. Uh, yeah, the previous one, yeah. yeah. So here, how do you define the, the zeta? So, um, so uh, actually, it's a given parameter. So uh, given yes. by the user? You yes, mean? given by the user. Actually, it uh, depends on your different application. If you like to visualize them uh, on a mobile phone, the threat, the threat may be uh, quite small. But if you like using a, a web browser to look into this uh, application, it will be different. So it, we think it's uh, like a given parameter. So, we, uh, yeah. so is there a way you can help mm. users to determine the, the best data uh, in, for their use case? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, we um, you may have to let the user to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe give them hints, like some ideas of how to decide this parameter. Oh, uh, OK. So uh, one of the uh, ideas is that because uh, we can give, like, uh, 
because we are using different device to uh, to visualize the results. So one one way is, is that we can use some uh, certain percentage of the your, your resolution. For example, you are giving different. You have a big screen or, or you have a small screen. So you have have some specific, specific uh, percentage of the screen to uh, to to set this uh, distance threshold. Yeah. I see. Uh, but so in case of mobile phones, if the, the screen has some kind of super sampling mechanism, like the retina display that Apple used, so it might be difficult for a user to come up with the, the CDR. Yes. Uh, so that's why we, uh, uh, so uh, we also have the another, we also have the size K to control the number of re results shown on the, on, on, the, on the map. So the, both of them can control the result, uh, the, the final results. Yeah. I see. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker once again.